Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be going over how to stream data through TD Ameritrade's API. There's a variety of things you can stream using this API, but in this example, I'll be going over how to log in, how to set the quality of service, how to log out, and for the streaming parts, I'll be getting the most actives. And in future videos, I'll go over other examples, such as streaming futures, options, and chart data. But this should serve as a general example on how to stream data using this API. So in this very first block of code in the documentation shows us how to get started. So I went ahead and translated this block in R and we're gonna go over an example on how to log in and log out. So I set this up using two scripts. One script will contain all of our functions and the main script, which is the one you're seeing now, will contain all the commands we need to stream our data. So once we call in all of our functions, we're going to go ahead and establish a connection. We're going to get the state of our connection. We're going to assign what to do once we get a message from our connection, which is just to display that message, and what to do once the stream closes, which is just to print out that we closed. Once we have everything assigned, we can go ahead and send our login block, which contains our credentials in order for us to log in. And we're also going to set our quality of service, or QoS, which is the frequency in which we want to stream. And I'll go over that in detail in our function script. So this very first block is just to log in. The next section is our streaming section. So here I set up a new environment called API data. So we can send all of our data that we receive into this new environment and we can extract later. So here I reassigned our on message function. We will not only display the message we receive, but we're also going to assign the data into that new environment so that we can later extract it. Once we have that function set up, I'm going to go ahead and send our actives all block, which is in our function script. And if everything runs correctly up to this point, you will start seeing the stream out in your console every few seconds. And the pretty neat thing about this is that while this is streaming, you can interactively use our studio as well. So this very next line called get actives will get you the very latest actives list, depending on what you send. And the line after that called get actives all will get you all the data up to that point. And then finally, the very last block is just to log out. So here we're gonna send our logout block and this will close out your connection and you will see a printout out in the console as well. So I'll go over an example later. I just wanted to give you an overview of what's going on in this script. So now if we take a look at our function script, we start off by requiring some packages. We need to assign our API key. So you're gonna need to manually assign your API key I have already assigned it, so I'm just going to block this out so that my API key doesn't get reassigned. The very next thing we need is our tokens, specifically our refresher token. I have a video on how to get that, and I have saved mine as an RDS file, and this will be needed in order to get an access token. So all we need to pass in is our refresher token and our API key into this function to get an access token. So again, we need to pass in our refresher token and our API key, and we need to post this by passing in this URL and adding some headers. Once we get that response, we're gonna extract our access token. And once we have our access token, we can use the very next function, which will get us our streamer info. So we're gonna go ahead and pass in our access token. We're gonna go ahead and make a get request. And if the page status is not 200, I will then read in my refresher token and use that function we created to get an access token. We're gonna make a get request to get the streamer subscription keys and the streamer connection info. And for the headers, I'm just passing in my bearer token and we're gonna go ahead and extract the raw data. So this will actually return a list and this list contains all of our streamer info we will need in order for us to stream data. So that's what this function is doing. We will go ahead and use that function to get our streamer info and that will be assigned into user principal response, just like in the documentation. So within this list, we're gonna extract all our credentials and our streamer information. And the very first thing we need to adjust is our token timestamp which takes us to our next block. So our next block is just the JSON block, which lists the service we wanna use. So we're trying to log in, our unique ID. Again, this could be any number. Our account and source will be extracted from that user principal response, along with our user ID, token, company segment, our CD domain, user group, access level, our app ID, and our ACL, along with the formatted timestamp. So this whole block will be assigned into login. If you remember, in our other script here we have login so we're going to send that whole block in order for us to log in which takes us to our next block which is the quality of service block so here our command is qos for quality of service we need to pass in our account and our source and your qos level which if we take a look at the documentation here in the documentation you see the qos levels 
So I have assigned mine to zero, which is express. So it'll take approximately 500 milliseconds. So in the script, I'll just go ahead and leave it at zero. And this whole block gets sent in our main script as well, which is this very next line. So we send that QoS block and you'll see a message indicating that this update was successful. All right, the very next block in our functions is to log out. So we don't need to send anything for parameters, just our account, source, request ID, and of course the command to log out. Now the next couple of blocks will be the JSON blocks required to stream data, and they all look very similar. So you will need to change the service and the keys depending on what you want to stream. But in this actives underscore NASDAQ, I want to stream the most active stocks in this exchange in the last minute. So if we take a look at the documentation, you can pick any of these. So active NASDAQ, NYC, options, or over-the-counter stocks. You can also pick the venue depending on the service you choose and the duration. So I have mine set to 60 or every minute. So it'll return the most active stocks in the past minute. But you could look back 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, or all day. So in the script, I left a couple of options you can stream. So this will be for the NASDAQ every minute. If you want NASDAQ for the whole day, you would just change this to all. So I'll switch it back to 60. The next section is to stream the most active options. So here we need to specify the most active options. And I want the most active options in the last 10 minutes. Alternatively, if you want to stream everything, I have a block for that, which is active to all. So here we include the most active options in the past 10 minutes, the most active stocks in NASDAQ in the last minute, the over-the-counter stocks in the last 30 minutes, and finally for the NYC, we're going to stream the most active throughout the day. And all this block gets assigned into actives all. So depending on what you want to stream or if you want to modify these in the main script, you will need to select any of these three, so actives NASDAQ, options, or all. And then this brings us to our very last two functions which is to format the messages in a way that's easy to read. So in our functions, here we see that we have get actives and get actives all. And these two functions are similar, except that this very first function retrieves the latest, while the other function retrieves everything up to that point in time. So we start off by getting the latest message in this environment called API underscore data. We're going to assign that to temp. If the response in that temp variable is not null, we're going to extract the previous message. And I left this in there because once you log out, that very last message that gets sent to us indicating we have logged out is saved into this environment. So we're going to go ahead and skip over that message. Once that gets assigned, we're going to go ahead and our the results depending on the length of the content we have so for the most part it'll return 20 stocks or symbols and what these messages contain are the most active by number of trades and most active by volume so we're going to do a bit of formatting and you could take a look at the documentation if you want more information but this will be saved as a data frame which will contain the symbol the number of trades or volume the percentage of that volume and the service we called so either nasdaq 60 or options in the last 10 minutes into a data frame along with the timestamp so that we can later analyze this or maybe we can use this to make trades so it's a little annoying because everything is sent to us as a character so that's why you see all these str splits and weird formatting so after we split the data we're going to go ahead and return it as a data frame so we're going to have three columns for the main data which is the symbol trades or volume and the percentage and we're going to go ahead and add our timestamp and the key the key is the service we're going to row bind everything and return that as our output similarly to get all the messages all that I really changed was I gathered all the names in this environment. I got rid of the messages that don't have any stock or options data. I will then pass in the names as a list in this function. So we're gonna go one message at a time and we're gonna apply the same formatting we did in the function above. Once we rowbind our results, we're gonna return that as output. So after this block gets completed, I'm gonna rowbind all the messages together into a data frame called DF and return that data frame. All right, so that's it for the functions. I'm going to go ahead and save it. We're going to go into our main script and go over an example. So we're going to call in all of our functions. We're going to establish a connection here. We're going to get the state. And in the console, you'll see a one, which means it's open. And on every message, I just want to display the message we receive. On a close, I just want to display that we're closed. I'm going to send my login block. So here we got our response indicating that our login was successful. Zero means successful. We're going to establish our QoS. So our QoS says command succeeded. I'm going to set a new environment to store all the messages, 
which will assign all the messages into that new environment. And I want to get the most actives. So I'm going to run that line. And here we see our display in our console. So it's continuously updating. I'm going to go ahead and log out. And once you log out, you'll see this response. Command log out, the code is zero, and the message was success. So we have successfully logged out. And to view the actual data, you can do this while this is running as well. But here I'm going to get all the actives we got. So for every message we get, we get two responses. And here we have grouped them by either zero or one. So this entire block that I highlighted is the zero block. So here we see our symbols. For the zero block, these are the number of trades. For the OTC market, we have a total of two trades. And since one went to this ticker and the other one went to this ticker, we get a weight of 50%. The next block, which is the one block, is the actual volume. We have our tickers, our volume, and the volume as a percentage. So here in this table, you'll see a zero or a one. Just remember that the zeros are trades and ones are volumes. So for the NASDAQ, this is our next block. So in the past minute, we've had a total of 124 trades for Tesla out of 1800, which gives it a weight of 6.86% and so on. So for the volume, it's everything past the one. So here we have SFT with a total volume of 216,000 out of a total of 1.7 million. So that gives it a weight of 12 and a half percent. And this number here in this column indicates the number of stocks it returned. So for this key, it returned 10 stocks. But if you remember for our OTC, we had a total of two, which are these two here. But since this is aftermarket, I don't think it returned any options. Yeah, it didn't return any options, but for the options, you'll see something similar. So it'll give you the ticker, the expiration, the strike, and whether it's a call or a put, the number of trades or volume, and the percentage as well. Well, guys, this concludes the video. I hope this was useful information. In future videos, I hope to bring you other examples of what we can do using the streamer. I opened up a Patreon page if you want to get the script, and I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description area. And this is where I'll be posting any future scripts. You'll still have access to the GitHub. So on Patreon, I'll be adding some of my personal scripts. So right now I have a script on there that will scrape the CBOE for end of the day options data. And on average, I get options for approximately 5,400 different tickers or symbols, including indices. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.